Before we start today, I have to tell you about State Farm agent Brian McDevitt. A lot of our listeners have gone to him for all their insurance needs, and he's been very helpful, getting them the coverage they deserve. There's no game with Brian. He's just here to help and make sure you feel safe. So if you have insurance needs and you haven't called him yet, what are you waiting for? Dial up the number, 630-796-2662. That's 630-796-2662. Or find him online at brianisbyagent.com. That's ryanisbyagent.com, and make sure to mention Sports Talk Chicago. Like a good neighbor, St. Farm is there. I want to start today with this. Success never comes easy. Nobody just wakes up in the morning and, oh, here it is, all here. I have to do no work and put in no effort. It takes a lot of time and a lot of resilience. Sacrifices need to be made. You have to be able to overcome adversity. If you can't, you're not cut out for it. You are not going to succeed if you let every little stone get in your way. Some people can't handle it, and it's fine. Just don't expect, then, everything to work out. Nothing is ever handed to you. For anybody. That's a life lesson, not a sports lesson. Nothing is ever handed to you. Even if you have the best roster in football, basketball, baseball, guess what? Doesn't mean you automatically win. How many times have we seen great rosters lose? Atlanta Braves. 15 straight division championships, one World Series. Tom Glavitt, Craig Maddox, John Smoltz, one World Series. All those years together, and only one real championship to show for it. 1986 Bears. Great team. Did nothing. Should have won another Super Bowl. Didn't. Everybody says 85 was the greatest team I've ever seen. 86 was pretty damn good, too. Guess what? They did nothing. You have to be able to overcome adversity. You have to be able to get over injuries, issues order to win. You know, the White Sox are in that category. Might be surprising to some, but they are. 22 games above 500 as we talk about them today. And they've had a litany of issues entering the season and during the season. Still win it. Still lead the division. Have a 99.7% chance to make the postseason. You know what I find funny about the White Sox? To this day, we still have people criticizing Tony La Russa. Bad lineup. No baseball IQ. Made a mistake here. Doesn't know how to use his bullpen. Well, he has made minimal mistakes. I want to read off to you the injury list for the White Sox just for the month of August. Carlos Rodon. Mayuri Garcia. Adam Engel, Tim Anderson, Lance Lynn, Lucas Giolito, Tim Anderson again. All in one month. I don't know how you even manage a team with all those injuries, but he has. And they've been winning. <laughs> You're losing a Cy Young Award candidate in Lance Lynn. Top shortstop in Chicago in Tim Anderson. Giolito's gotten better. Carlos Rodan, another candidate. They're still 22 games above 500. A lot of people like to call out the fact that the White Sox can't beat teams above 500. Well, from CBS Sports, the current positions hold the AL playoff field with the White Sox, Rays, Astros, A's, and Red Sox. This season, the White Sox against those four teams are combined 7-12. and 12. And they posted a run differential of minus 26. But one complaint I've always heard about the White Sox all year, they can't beat teams above 500. What are they going to do in the postseason? I agree that that's concerning. They should be doing better. 
against these teams because chances are they're going to see you in the ALCS. So Rogers said, White Sox Astros, and he said it could be a coin flip. Here's why I'm not worried just yet. I've read you the injuries. I want to see this team fully healthy. Fully 100% healthy, no issues, nobody hurts. I want to see them doing great. I mean, think about the whole season for the White Sox, even from the beginning. No Aloy, no Luis Roberts. Yes, Monty Grandal was hurt. He just came back. They have constantly been fighting the injury bug. And in their credit, they're still winning. I don't care who they're facing. I don't care, oh, they're beating the Twins. They're beating the Indians, the Royals. A win's a win. They won six straight. Oh, but they lost the series to the Yankees. Well, they beat the A's three out of four. I believe they're capable of winning when their team is healthy. And that's not controversial. How are you going to win when you're piecing together some makeshift lineup every night? And to Tony La Russa's credit, he still found a way to win games and keep his team at the same pace despite all of these injuries. You're losing two potential Cy Young Award candidates in the month of August alone, still 22 games above 500. Who is that a credit to? Yes, it could be to the players filling in, but mostly... It's to LaRusso putting guys in and using them in the situations that work. I know it's hard. I know you want to fight it. I know you don't want to give LaRusso credit, but the fact of the matter is, I don't know who else you could praise for this. Got a manager using some makeshift lineup, tons of different guys, trying to plug and play them at different positions, and it's still working. And look at the White Sox in August. They beat the A's three out of four. Yes, they lost to the Rays two out of three, but they came back, split with the Blue Jays, uh, two out of three over the Cubs. Now they're on that win streak, beating down the Pirates. I mean, this is significant for them. Just hope more people could see it. No, know everybody's focused on the injuries and who's hurt and, oh, they can't beat good teams, but can you imagine this team fully healthy in October? Remember this, too. It's not like they're fresh, right? In a best-of-five, best-of-seven series, you're going to throw your aces out there every single day. And as of today, Dallas Keuchel, I'm sorry, you should not be in the playoff rotation. No way. I'm not going to put somebody in who is a 5 ERA. I don't care how old he is. I don't care how much experience he has. It doesn't make a difference to me. I'm not about experience. I'm about results. Yes, he won a Cy Young five years ago. What has he done today? 5 ERA, tons of runs given up, and he eats innings. whoop de doo You do need innings eaters in the postseason, no question. But I'm not going to put somebody in who is a 5 ERA. That just won't happen. They need to use their top guys. It's going to have to be a three-man rotation, so it's still going to be pretty tough to determine who should go in and who shouldn't. But I like Giolito. I like Lynn if healthy and Rodon. And Cease would be the number four. If you want to keep Keichel in the mix, put him in the bullpen. Think about this. What if one of those guys totally sputters out? You could bring in Keuchel, Kopak, Lopez. All of them have started games for the White Sox this year, and they've been productive. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Bullpen's getting better, too. Hendricks has continued to anchor the closer spot. Craig Kimbrell hasn't really done well, which is a bit surprising to me. It looks like the Cubs won that trade. But Tapera's done good, Bummer's getting better, and Crochet is at a 3.02 ERA. And this lineup continues to hit. That's their bread and butter. I mean, when you have everybody almost still, and the OPS Plus is above 100, 1 through 9, that's literally unprecedented. That never happens. I've never seen a team like that. 
The Pony Ground Doll at 923 on an OPS, 154 OPS plus. Alloy at 124. Adam Engel at 130. When he comes back, he'll be a big contributor. Jose Abreu, just one player of the month in August, 102 RBIs already. I mean, this team is so talented. And look, I know at the end of the day, if they don't do anything this year, it's not the end of the world, right? I mean, they're going to be good for five to seven years, but I'd like to see them make a run. They are talented enough to make a run today. They're talented enough to be in the World Series, no question. They have the pitching, they have the hitting. When you have seven, eight, nine guys with OPS pluses above 100, and you have two legitimate Cy Young Award candidates in your five-band rotation, there is no reason why you should not be at least in the ALCS, if not World Series. And they're doing all this despite overcoming all these injuries, and they're still finding ways to win. I have never been more impressed with any team across baseball. They've suffered so many injuries. The criticism's always been there. Oh, why can't they beat good teams? Wait till they're healthy. And they're still winning, despite not being 100%. And what you want about Tony LaRusa, he's put together some crafty lineups to win games. Plain and simple. That's a fact. And the guys who he does put in perform, to their credit. Actually do well. I mean, I read you those injuries just from August. Tim Anderson, Giolito, Lynn, Anderson again, Engel, Garcia, Rodon. And you're telling me this team? Huh, 22 games above 500 today. How the hell is that possible? Huh. I've never seen a team with that many injuries winning. And not just winning, dominating. They beat the A's three out of four. Hunting high in a win streak. Lead the division. Haven't lost really any games as far as being up. They've still been the same dominant team that they were back in June. And I do believe when they're fully healthy, when everybody has no issues to worry about injury-wise, they're going to make a big run in October. I see it. If they're doing this now, with these many guys on the mend, imagine what happens when they're fully healthy. I want to mention this, too. Imagine Rick Renteria managing this team. That's all I got to say. I'm not a hater of Rick Renteria. I liked him. I thought he did good with what he had last year. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think he'd be equipped to deal with all these injuries. Very few managers could deal with this. Even some established guys in the game today. To lose all these great players, your starting catcher, two of your starting pitchers who happen to be Cy Young Award candidates, Starting shortstop, outfielders, and you're still winning at the same pace you've always been. That's pretty damn impressive to me. Not everybody is equipped to handle this situation. And I can't even imagine the pressure around LaRusa and this whole team. Everyone knows the Sox are supposed to be great this year. That adds to the issue. Not easy. Not easy to please everybody. Not easy to keep winning and be expected to win when all your key players are down. They're still doing it. They're still winning today. In fact, they're thriving. They're moving into the month of September. With all these injuries, all these issues... Doesn't phase him. What did I say to open up this show? Success never comes easy. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, oh, I win, I'm good. No. Your ability to overcome adversity will determine how much success you have. Everybody's great when things are going great. What happens when there's a bad turn? What do you do? How do you react? The White Sox have reacted in the best way possible. They don't care. Someone gets hurt, okay, next man up, let's go and win a ball game. That's the reason, like come October, when you have to make a playoff roster, they're going to be good. Depth, they're going to be great at depth. I'm just really in love with this team. And I'm very, very impressed at the whole operation top to bottom. The fact that they're winning all these games, 
with all their star players hurt. It's unbelievable. Remember in March, April, May, my air, Tony LaRouche, uh, they're not starting off right. Oh, he forgot. He forgot what the count was. He forgot the rules. Where are those people today? Oh, never mind. They're still here finding something else to complain about. You know, it's so funny. This team will win a World Series at some point. Maybe not this year, next year, year after. And there will still be detractors claiming Tony La is the wrong manager. How do I know this? Well, look at the Cubs and Joe Madden. Do they stand? People are saying, we won the World Series and Joe Madden had nothing to do with it. Really? Nothing? I get it, you had a good roster, but nothing? Come on. We both know that's completely a farce. Same's going to happen here. And there could be two different narratives. One is, LaRusso did nothing and he hurt the White Sox too. Well, a guy comes back from 2012, manages the first team he ever managed again, and wins a World Series. That's a hell of a narrative and a great story. But which one do you think the media is going to latch on to? That or he almost cost them the World Series? Fire him. I think we all know what the truth is there. I think the White Sox have done an outstanding job at getting to where they are today. Fight injuries. Fight key players. Going down. Cy Young Award candidates. MVP candidates, even, to an extent. Getting hurt. Spending time in the I.L. To see them where they are today is virtually impossible. And they're there. You could blame it on an easy schedule, or you could say, well, despite the easy schedule, they're still winning. They don't have their best guys. They don't have their real starting lineup and real starting rotation, and guess what? They're still beating Major League Baseball teams. I don't know, to me, that's something to celebrate. And I do believe when they're healthy, come October, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. I would hope a World Series championship. I do believe at least ALCS. If they don't get there, it's a disappointment. But based on how they played, there is no reason why they can't win it all. More to come. They're on Sports Talk Chicago. My interview with Troy Macker comes up next. Stay tuned.